I want you to imagine this. You're in Japan, you're having an excellent time, but you're a little bit peckish, and it's like, you know, 3.30 p.m. But everywhere you look, everything seems to be closed. Well, that's because things in Japan tend to close for lunch and then reopen again for dinner. Some places will say they close at 2, but last order is at 1.30, so if you don't arrive before then, you're not going to be eating. Some places close at 3, last order is at 2.30. Some places close at 2.30, last order is at 2. It can be pretty confusing because it is not consistent. Every shop has their own thing. There is one place you can go to seek refuge for your hungry belly, and that is at the mall. Japanese department stores and malls tend to have a food court in them. And it's not like the kind of like fast food junkie food court that you might be thinking of depending on where you're from. These are actually really nice places with very good little meal sets that you can enjoy. So today we are heading into a department store. We're gonna be heading all the way up and we're gonna be enjoying some uh, teishoku. We're gonna be enjoying some fish. You know what? I'm not gonna talk. Let's just go, let's just go do it. It's the, it's the easier way to do it. Let's go. B1, we've got the grocery store, and now we're gonna go up. Da 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 ding. We're going here. Now we've got to take the elevator up to the seventh floor, and and while I'm on the elevator, I think I might give you a little elevator pitch about uh, Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. So if you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. I just purchased my very first watercolor paint kit and I got a little tiny book and I just have no idea where to start. So I was really excited to find this course by Sarah Meadows. It kind of combines my love of plants with learning how to use watercolor. And because there's such a big online learning community for these classes, you can check out all the other student projects and see that there are so many different types of levels. You don't have to be an expert. And the first 1,000 people to use my link to sign up will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let's eat some food. Isn't that thoughtful? A lot of restaurants and cafes in Japan are now having these little really thoughtful mask cases for you to take off your mask and to put it inside. And I know a lot of people are still shocked. They're like, oh my God, you guys are still wearing masks? Yes, it doesn't bother me at all. It's, uh, it's excellent for blocking simple things like allergies and viruses. But you know what? Everyone can do, you do you. This mask case is delightful. All right, let's see if this is gonna be a massively overwhelming menu because I have a feeling it's gonna be this is uh, Kaisen Marts. Basically, it is a fish-based restaurant, but they do have options for people who don't like fish. Yeah, massive menu choices. Oh my gosh, okay, let me just do a quick scan down here. Oh, Teishoku, Kaisen Don, Soba Mini Don, Otsume. Okay, so basically, what's interesting about this place is it's a combination between like an izakaya-style food and like a normal kind of cafe-type restaurant. Teishoku is kind of interesting. I don't know if it's anywhere else in the world, but in Japan, it's like a dish, a plate, a tray, and then there's tiny little dishes on it with different types of items. So it's almost like if you ordered like a mini appetizer and a mini salad and it all comes on the plate at once, some of them will even have like a little dessert. So it's like all your meals. I know what it's like. It's like a luxury airplane meal. You know when you're on an airplane and they give you a meal and it has like everything on it at once? It's like that, but like a very nice version. Yes, probably not the best comparison because all of us have bad memories with airplane meals and stale bread, and, but it's not like that. All right, so main page, we're looking at uh, a lot of Maguro tuna-based things and they have these kind of bowls with rice and they put thinly sliced sashimi on top. Not super popular outside of Japan, but once you come to Japan, lots of places give you these options. This one does a lot of um, salmon as well, which salmon is not usually served raw in Japan from Japanese salmon. It's usually import salmon. So they usually cook their salmon if it's from Japan. Otherwise, you're looking at import salmon. I didn't know that. I only learned that in the past couple of years. Oh my gosh, you guys. Ooh, okay, so we're entering the yaki like fried section here. So you can get things like fried shrimp, like tempura shrimp. You can get uh, croquets. 
They have just a tempura set, and they also have lots of different types of fish you can choose from. So they've got saba, which is mackerel, a little bit oily, but you can add like ginger to it, which they'll serve for you, and it kind of cuts through it. Very healthy for you. Salmon, of course. Oh, they've got karage, so you can get chicken. And they have a soba section with mini don. Okay, so don is donburi. It's like that rice bowl with stuff on top. Mini don would be like a tiny version of that. So you can get soba, which is that nutty buckwheat noodle. And then on the side, you can get like a small little bowl, which is so excellent when you can't make up your mind. Like this one has soba and it has a little mini maguro don. So I could have like sashimi on my rice with my soba. This one has a tiny tendon, like tempura don. Oh, chopped fatty tuna. I did that thing again when I didn't eat enough food before filming. Uh, and there's more. Oh, otsumami. This is kind of that izakaya vibe that I was talking about. When you have to wait for food to be prepared, but like you also want to drink and maybe you're really hungry, you want to get some little meals out first, you want to order from this menu. So you've got things like pickled salt and cucumber. Oh, hiyashi tomato. Tomato served with mayo. Sounds silly. So good. I recommend it. Edamame beans, gyoza. Well, we're not looking to eat this right now. We're going to keep flipping through. They have a sashimi section, very reasonably priced, might I add. Like Sen Gohakyo En is like basically $15 for a lot of sashimi. Wow. And this is also really nice because like let's say you don't want to go to a fancy sushi restaurant or like you don't want to go to a capsule. Capsule twice sushi restaurant? That's not right, is it? It's a conveyor belt sushi restaurant. Then you can come here and have like just as nice. It won't end. Okay, yaki nimono, so we're looking at fried things. Yaki means anything that's been like grilled rather than deep fried, I should say. All different types of fish and squid. And now we're into the tempura agemono. So this is stuff that's been covered in a little bit of batter. So we've got a little tempura plate. We've got more chicken and ginormous giant shrimp. Ah, I've reached the end of the menu and the drink menu. Wow, lots of different sours that you can get and they have a gigantic sake menu. So like, this place is kind of like, it's a little bit unique. I don't usually see a combination of lots of different types of alcohol like in izakaya and also some really delicious food. Wow. Arigatou gozaimasu. Makiri. Okay. Very generous pour. If you see uh, an overflowing pour, it's kind of the way of the shop saying, you know, um, thank you for coming, here's a little bit extra. Most izakayas will always kind of give you your sake and overflow it a bit, but not all of them do. Doesn't mean that they're cheap or they don't like you or anything, it's just not their particular style, but when they kind of overflow it, it's just like a nice, generous way of saying, this is what you paid for, and like, here's a little more. I'm gonna have to sip this or else it's gonna just go everywhere. I would like to apologize in advance for the extra cleavage shot which is about to occur. I normally, I'm not a cleavage showing person, but there's no other way to do this. Avert your eyes. Maybe I'll just blur it out with a picture of Kogi. Now I can pick it up. Make sure you give it a little bit of a weight because it's gonna drip a bit. And you have a choice. You can pick this up and you can drink it right away. Or I like to drink mine down a little bit and then I kind of pour it in. Mm. So nice. This is a karukuchi, actually cho karukuchi, very, very dry. I really like a dry sake, not as sweet. So I find that I can drink more of it because the sweet stuff can be a little bit more like desserty and cloying for me personally. And I gotta tell you, I did not expect to be discussing sake with you guys at this place. I really, truly thought this was just gonna be like kind of cafe food, but um, happy days, excellent surprise. The video will only get better. <laughs> Nails it, did not pour it all over the table on camera, which would have been very embarrassing. You guys noticed that it was nearly, I would say like almost two fingers worth of sake that was added to it. So it doesn't look like it's a lot, but it's actually like, it's quite a generous extra pour, I must say. Ooh, my special teishoku has arrived. First of all, they told me that we have refills on the rice and the miso soup, which is very exciting. Uh, over here, we have the yaki fish, so it's been grilled, it has a bit of a sauce on it. And this particular part of the fish is kind of like the cheek area, so it's super, super soft. We have the salmon and the maguro tuna sashimi here. 
the wasabi with a little bit of ginger on the side. We have a, a broccoli and crab salad with a little bit of mayonnaise and some tofu with a little bit of pork. It kind of looks like very, very thin samgatsal. It's a type of Japanese cut, but samgatsal is an easy way to kind of like think of it. A little bit fatty, a little bit porky, and it's going to be probably a bit sweet. Then we have the miso soup and the rice over here. So it's a pretty well-balanced meal. Well, I think I'm going to uh, dig on in because this smells amazing. And uh, let's discuss later. Itadakimasu. Uh, I destroyed that. Not only did I destroy that, I am on to my uh, second bowl of miso soup because this place does free rice and miso soup refills. The word of the day to refill something, o ka wa -ri. I definitely have it on the screen right now, don't I? It's somewhere here. I just don't know where. Wait, I'm probably calling. Is it here? Is it here? Where is it? You'll also notice that there are no spoons available on the table. That's because it's completely fine and acceptable to lift up your soup and just drink it like this. No problem. And when it comes to rice, you can lift it and eat from the bowl. While I was in Korea, however, it was considered to be a little bit low class and rude to lift your rice bowl. Different cultures, different rules. Plus, Korea has scalding hot metal bowls, and so when you pick them up, you're like, and you immediately drop them, so best to keep it low. But in uh, Japan, they use a different kind of dish, different kind of chopsticks. You can lift it up and eat it like that. Now the sashimi, you probably already know, you put a little bit of shoyu or soy sauce into the tiny plates, and then you can choose to add wasabi for a little bit of an extra kick. You just kind of dip it in it. You can put it on your rice and eat it with rice. You can have it on its own. The grilled fish. That is something that I would like to uh, make a correction on. I said that it was yaki, that it was grilled, but that's actually not correct. Once I put my chopsticks in and kind of pushed through it and saw how super soft it was, I realized it was a simmered or boiled inside of a sauce. The sauce is like a little bit sticky and it's sweet. It's probably a combination of like soy sauce and mirin, maybe some brown sugar. And it has like a lovely, I dare say, teriyaki flavor. So in North America, we say like teriyaki and it's kind of like that sweet, salty sauce. It's just like this beautiful, clean piece of fish. So <laughs> I used to stab like a fork, but now I do this movement like I'm holding chopsticks because you, you hold a chopstick, you put it into the fish and you spread it. So now I'm like, <sighs> so it can be intimidating because it's just so gosh darn bony. Like, let's take a look at what remains, shall we? So this here, it just has so much bone. And when I was growing up, I don't know how many of you are like this, I was told that eating a fish with a bone could freaking kill you. It's the end, man. You just need to have Final Destination Part 3. They serve them a piece of bone fish and the person's like, and they die. Well, that's silly. There are many parts of the world that eat fish with bone in. And I'd like to thank Korea for teaching me this. One day I asked my coworkers, like, well, what do I do if I eat fish and there's a bone in my throat and I'm choking to death? And they said, I don't know, I just like, shovel more rice in my mouth, swallow it really hard, and it just kind of pushes the bone down. And I was kind of like, gong. Yeah, why, why didn't I think of that? So don't be intimidated by it. When it comes to the way that it looks, it might seem a bit unappealing, but there are different parts of the fish that have a very tender piece of meat. So when it's simmered nice and slow and you break the meat apart, it's just like this melt in your mouth, marshmallow level fish. It is so nice. Put that with the rice and you're just like, mm, this is the teriyaki experience that I have in my food court, except way freaking better. Mm. Well, I really enjoyed that, but you know what? Don't take my word for it. Why don't we check out some of the, the Google reviews? The fish was delicious. The rice was refilled and it was delicious. It was a satisfying lunch. 
there is also a fried set meal on the menu, so it's okay to go with people who are not good at fish. I used it with my family. Bluefin tuna sashimi. It's greasy. It was delicious. You are free to replace rice and miso soup. I will come back if I go nearby. I had a tuna and salmon sashimi set meal. The tuna was delicious with a melting feeling, but I was surprised that the salmon was delicious. It was quite delicious, whether it was the same, no matter where I ate the salmon. The price is gentle for rice. There's a set meal, so you can use it for dinner. Today's set meal for lunch was deep fried redfish, and seasonal salmon, and yellowtail. I ordered a spear, but the yellowtail sashimi was the right temperature. I think that the point that it is not too cold sashimi, which is common at lunch, is high. The soy sauce is masada soy sauce. The clerk is also excited and responds well. A shop that can be expected in the future if the quality of both dishes is the first day of the opening. I went to lunch, fish restaurant. The building of the shop and the departure of the clerk are like a cafe, but the food offered is casual Japanese food, and it feels very good. Today I ate a set of sea bream and auction chira sushi and soba noodles. It was very light and delicious gem. Well, there you have it. Cospo was good, everybody. If you're starving and it's 3:30 and you're really looking for something delicious to eat, don't discredit going to a shopping mall. Sometimes they have chain shops inside of it, and sometimes they have places that are a bit more unique. And let me tell you, when it's the balls hot, sweaty, humid summer of Japan, and you are pouring sweat like a dolphin, sleek, every orifice of your body, you're gonna want to come inside and enjoy that sweet, sweet air conditioning. Head to a mall, check out the food court, and enjoy a freaking delicious meal. Well balanced, uh, yummy. Everything is clean, has an izakaya vibe, and I've been listening to a combination of.、Uh, Japanese rock music and、um, strange 80s, 90s music throwbacks. Like seriously, they had TLC's Waterfall, and I was like, yeah, don't go chasing waterfalls, Martina. If you guys haven't already, please head on over to my King Kogi YouTube channel. I have another Tokyo tours up. I think you will really enjoy those. They're more about the the back streets and the smaller gems and jewels of Japan. So check out King Kogi. That is my YouTube channel, and、uh, all the links are in the info box. And thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, time for me to go slowly walk this off and maybe find myself a coffee.